Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening to the Quality Hub Chatting with ISO Experts. I'm your host, Xavier Francis, and today I'm here with Matthew Pilly, consultant at Core Business Solutions. Glad you could join us. Yeah, morning, X. Glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome. We're so glad you're here with us today. Now, on this week's podcast, we're going to be discussing Clause 7.1.3, Preventive Maintenance. But before we begin, let's hear a little bit more about Matthew and his journey and experiences. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Matthew? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm with CORE about a year now, just a little over that. So uh, good to get that first year under my belt. Yeah. But prior to that, I worked in uh, medical device packaging for many years. I, okay. won't, I won't say the number, but it's been... <laughs> Double digits. It's been a long time. Yeah. So but through that career path, a lot of time spent managing quality and working with, uh, with ISO standards. Okay. So, yeah. That's great. We're so glad you're here. And we're here to talk about preventive maintenance. With that in mind... Clause 7.1.3 states, the organization shall determine, provide, and maintain the infrastructure necessary for the operation of its processes and to achieve conformity of products and services. With all that said, what exactly does the ISO 9001 standard entail regarding preventive maintenance, and why is it crucial for businesses? Yeah, so the intent with Clause 7.1.3 is to ensure that there are proper controls in place for, among other things, such as building and utilities maintenance, transportation resources, and control of IT resources, that any equipment that's used in the manufacture of products or conversion of a company's products is you know, properly maintained. So really, the buildings that business takes place in and all its related infrastructure, equipment, and utilities? Yes, exactly. The, the maintenance of equipment is an integral part of an organization's operation. Uh, Because without it, there's risk of equipment breakdown or failure. Proper maintenance reduces the potential to the extent possible that, you know, equipment assets experience some kind of critical failure, Mm -hmm. uh, which could impact the company's ability to deliver on its commitments to their customers. Okay. Uh, You know, additionally, if proper maintenance is not conducted, uh, operating windows might shift or mechanical wear and tear on the equipment might result in equipment not being able to produce or manufacture the products that that have been agreed to through specifications with the customer. Okay. So just making sure everything is maintained that's required to meet customer needs, right? Yeah, mostly. It's important to remember that equipment maintenance may include part and component inspections, peri- okay. you know, periodic and regular replacement of parts that are subject to constant wear when equipment's operating. You know, functionality checks and testing mm-hmm. might be something else. You know, lubrication, you know, other tasks as well. Okay. And, you know, and a company should use you know, OEM recommendations when they're available to assist in the definition of whatever those preventive maintenance tasks should be. Okay. But also should define the tasks to be completed and the frequencies of those tasks based on their application and use of the equipment. Okay. So so it's going to be different from every company, depending on what you're doing. This is more from a manufacturing, you're going to be dealing with checks on the equipment, lubrication. Right regular maintenance exactly. or something else. It might not be so much of that, but it might be something there. you're dealing with computers and make sure you're up to date, software is still working, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would say IT resources are, are certainly a consideration, probably more so with data mm-hmm. integrity, you know, management right. of critical data and, and making sure that you have backup and storage and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, hardware, right. you want to make sure that your systems are you know, up to date and current and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you don't want a Windows 7 machine necessarily. Exactly. Unless exactly. you absolutely but, have to. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly right. No, there, I, mean, I know in manufacturing, there's stuff that's still running on archaic stuff. And yeah, it's not for sure. And yeah, definitely. You have to do what you got to do. Yeah, that definitely happens. But I would say more so when we talk about preventive maintenance, really the focus is around, you know, manufacturing, converting right. equipment and, and things like that. Got it. And that, that's a lot to manage. Uh, so how should we approach what 7.1.3 means? Well, with ISO 9001, uh, a company is expected to identify what preventive maintenance really means for them. Okay. So organizations should start by identifying the equipment that should be subject to preventive maintenance, defining what that equipment is and kind of where it is within the building. Okay. The equipment should be identified either by equipment name or an asset number or something like that. And you want to be sure to define the frequency with which preventive maintenance has to be conducted. Okay. You know, some equipment may only need to be maintained once a year, while others might need to be maintained biannually or quarterly or monthly or, you know, whatever the frequency is that makes sense. So really taking a piece of equipment and defining what and where it is, when it needs to be maintained and how to maintain it. 
Exactly. Some organizations will perform preventive maintenance on an entire asset uh, at one time. Right? Okay. You can schedule downtime for equipment over a period of hours or shifts, knowing what that PM activity entails, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing the needs for that equipment and knowing that it can be addressed entirely within that window of time. Okay. But sometimes companies have much larger pieces of equipment, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. you've, you've got a piece of converting equipment and it might be hundreds of feet long and it's right. got you know hundreds of components in it and parts that might need to be maintained. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes companies will, uh, will break out preventive maintenance activities for a larger piece of equipment over an entire year and then identify within that year when certain components of the equipment are going to be maintained okay. so that they're not shutting down you know, their entire operation for right. hours and days and weeks at a time just to perform preventive maintenance, right? Totally get that. Yeah. You know, and so once you, you, you see what that necessary frequency is determined, like you said, if it's something larger, you can do it at intervals and not getting that production is down for an extended amount of time. That's a really good idea. But you still probably have to really make sure you're planning it that everything gets hit when it's supposed to be done yeah, within yeah. that cycle. You just might have the cycle instead of once a month, you might be hitting it three times a month because you have to. Yeah, get there might be. Sections. Yeah, there might be a PM activity that takes collectively. It could take you know days maybe mm -hmm. to to complete a full PM on a piece of equipment. So I've certainly seen where where companies do that. They they break it out over over an entire year. Or whatever, again, whatever right. makes sense based on their use of the equipment, right? How right. many uptime hours it has and how much they're utilizing it. Sometimes a piece of equipment isn't utilized 40 hours a week or more. Right. Sometimes it's used two days a week or something like that. Right. And so, the, you know, the company's up. It's, it's up to the organization to define based on usage, mm -hmm. really, what, what makes sense in terms of the frequency of those PM activities. And, and what they experience, right? When What they experience in terms of regular machine upkeep, part failure, and that sort of thing. Well, being on top of that has to be a little bit of a struggle. Are there any tools that are in place that can kind of help you stay on top of it? Well, yeah. So, I've certainly seen where organizations, you know, they manage all that with a manual process, but mm -hmm. that can be it, you know, especially for a large organization, if they've got a lot of pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. it can be a lot to to kind of keep up with and manage. So, mm -hmm. what's what's nice about what we offer at Core is that you know the platform provides tools to be able to create an asset or equipment listing. Right, mm -hmm. so you would start out with that, but you capture that equipment and and most importantly define for each piece of equipment what maintenance activities need to be completed. Okay, and then the frequencies of those activities can be defined within the system, right? right? And then schedule them accordingly based mm -hmm. on based on whatever that frequency is. The system provides a mean of, means of control for preventive maintenance and recall of that equipment when those maintenance activities are due. Mm -hmm. And if equipment becomes past due for maintenance, then the system gives you a notification that the tasks um, associated with that equipment are past due and and you know you'll you'll be aware that hey right. this you know this is this is now due and hasn't been completed yet time to time to get on it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Core does do a great job of keeping up to date with all your preventive maintenance needs. And the other thing that, I, that I've, I've talked to some other people, it's great because not only does it remind you, hey, this needs to be done, but you can keep the instructions in there and all of that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Where you're not scrambling, okay, where is, okay, yeah, it's due, but who did it last time? Who usually does it? Yeah. What's the procedure? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. You can keep all that in one place. Yeah. And defining exactly what needs to be done is an important piece of that PM activity, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be particular in how you define what needs to be done so that it's done right. Right. Uh, and, and, that, and so that you're ensuring that that equipment remains in an operational state yep. all the time, right? Absolutely. So how does preventive maintenance contribute to ensuring that the infrastructure meets the requirements set by ISO and Section 7.1.3? Yeah. So kind of as we, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, maintenance of equipment is critical in ensuring that equipment remains up and running mm -hmm. and is not at risk of regular or repeated, you know, windows of downtime. Right. If equipment fails or is down for any kind of significant amount of time, you know, this of course may impact a company's ability to follow through on its commitments to its customers, mm -hmm. right? And may result in late delivery of products, finished goods, or complete lack of delivery if equipment fails to the point of non-operation, right? Mm -hmm. Th that would be very, very bad. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I mean, that's the risk you're at if you're not yeah. performing preventive maintenance. Yeah. 
And it's interesting through, you know, you, you meet a lot of different companies and a lot of different clients through this process we have here at Core. And, and some people just, they'll, they'll just say, well, you know, the, the equipment runs and it runs all the time and there's never been a problem. Well, there's never a problem until there's a problem. Right. And, then, and, then, right. and then maybe you have a significant issue, right? So it's all about, it's that's why it's called preventive maintenance, right? right? So that we don't get to the point where you've got a critical failure with something and it can't be repaired or can't be repaired in a timely manner. And right. now you're, now you're impacting the customer's need, right. Right? right? And impacting your reputation potentially as a supplier and, and all that, you know, everything that goes along with that, yeah. right? Downtime and loss of profitability and all that. So, yeah, you want to ask those same people, do they change their oil in their car? You know, it's <laughs> exactly. like, well, it always runs. It starts when I turn the key. <laughs> exactly. Y- yeah, okay. Well, there's things that wear out and right. need to be changed and maintained. Absolutely. So that's, that's the whole point. Well, we can certainly see the importance of preventive maintenance and why the standard requires you to keep on top of it. I mean, that's that's pretty clear here. Now, how might this apply to a service or tech company? I know they're a little different. We're dealing primarily with with maintaining equipment in a manufacturing environment. Right. But that can still apply. How is that? Yeah. So for service and technology companies, they typically don't have physical equipment that needs to be maintained Mm -hmm. other than maybe, as we mentioned earlier, hardware. Right. So for those organizations, meeting infrastructure requirements typically means ensuring their buildings and facilities are controlled with proper security, that you've got controls in place for employee, you know, entrance and exit and that sort of thing using, Mm -hmm. you know, today it's key fobs or key card access of of some kind, right? And ensuring that critical data is properly protected and backed up as we, as we talked about earlier as well, Mm -hmm. with strong security and IT controls, right? Data Mm -hmm. backup and recovery, right? Very, very important piece of the infrastructure requirement, making sure that your data is always available, right? Yeah, secure. So that if you have to go back in time and know exactly what happened at any given point that you can you know, you can do that, right? Yeah. You can get your critical data back and make sure that you're not impacting your ability to provide additional information to your client or just understand what happened historically at your business. All very important. And today, you know, most of that is covered without really any kind of issue because a lot of companies are using, you know, cloud-based backup and mm-hmm. security processes. So data is backed up in multiple locations at multiple times, right? During right. any given period or day. So especially if you're using something cloud-based like Microsoft, I mean, they have it stored in multiple places. Right. But there are caveats to that where it might be secure if something gets lost or something breaks down from an IT standpoint, but not necessarily from a security standpoint. So right. there are some extra steps. I know you might want to d- decide whether that's worth doing or not. Yeah, for sure. Now, going with that, I know when I was younger, I worked in some more service-oriented companies, and they would rent their building. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have a building like a lot of manufacturers. And they manufacture sometimes rent, but often they don't. What about if you're dealing with that? You're dealing with the rental space for your building. To your point, it's it's kind of on the, the landlord, so mm-hmm. to speak, right? In terms of proper building maintenance, you're not going to be able to force your, your needs necessarily upon somebody else who owns the building. Right. But you would want to make sure that you have some level of proper control in place that's right. being applied by the person who owns the building. And again, that's probably more related to security of the building and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. You've got equipment, you've got products potentially in that building that obviously, you know, there's, there's money sitting on the shelf, yeah. right? So, yeah. um, or, or sitting in terms of equipment, you know, value of equipment, all that sort of stuff. So you do need to make sure that, again, that your building's secure, that your your products aren't at risk. You were mentioning IT. Sometimes in your building, you have shared IT. You have shared network, shared internet, stuff like that. You would probably look at your risks and what needs to be handled and maybe approach your landlord or maybe look at some other things. Hey, we're using a lot of bandwidth here. And sometimes we slow down and it really affects our productivity from a service standpoint. Are we able to get another, you know, maybe look at getting your own internet service, talking to a landlord about that or something? Yeah, I would agree that that's, and I think you, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there in terms of risk, right? So if somebody else owns the building, you know, what, what's the risk, Mm -hmm. you know, is there, is there risk in terms of the IT resources that are available to you as an organization? What are the potentials for the owner to have access to important information yeah, or critical yeah. data, right? And then risk also in terms of when you think about the the, the physical space, right. you know, what are the, what are the risks, right? Is it is it properly controlled in terms of not only security but but you know maybe safety and sort of, and those yeah, sort of things yeah. as well. Or maybe you have a little bit of a warehouse, you know, area but it's not cordoned off very well. It's just like, oh, over here on the right is you and over here on the left is somebody else. Well, right. That's a lot of products that somebody else could have access to yeah, if exactly. something stored there or something. For sure. So just taking a look at it, looking at your risks, seeing how you can be preventive on things like that. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. All right. So lastly, and 
We talk about this a lot. We're talking about how ISO does require some documented information, not as much as it used to be, but what documented information is necessary to support and demonstrate compliance with preventive maintenance requirements? Yeah, I mean, it's a good it's a good question. So as far as objective evidence goes, you know, organizations should have their equipment list, right? So they should have a, a, an equipment list capturing all their machinery and the equipment which requires preventive maintenance. Okay. And a list of the predetermined tasks that need to be completed as part of that maintenance activity, right? So it's it's really laying all that out at the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Or, you know, if you're if you're new to ISO and you've been in operation for a while, you know, going back and defining those things. Right. Definition of the frequencies with which those activities need to be completed. And then of course you need the supporting records or evidence of completion, noting what was done, mm-hmm. when the tasks were completed, and who carried out those activities. You know, those are kind of the, the primary things right. that you would want to have in place to to provide evidence to an auditor that you're that you're maintaining a a solid preventive maintenance right. program. Right. The great thing about our core compliance platform is that it allows you to define all of that in one system, kind of all in one place, and mm-hmm. capture all the required evidence of completion in an electronic solution without having hard copy forms and records with physical signatures, you know, kind of floating around that need to be compiled and organized and filed in a file cabinet or in a binder or somewhere else. Right. And, you know, you need to know where it is and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. So you've got a solution there with, with Core and all the other tools that are present within the platform that provide value from a quality management standpoint, mm-hmm. but it's all right there. It's really, it's a nice, it's a really nice way to kind of handle that entire process and avoid the uh, the pitfalls of hard copy documentation. Right. Especially when it comes to this, because this can be a lot. You have your documents, which might be, this is how you do it. This is how it should be done. This is the time we need to do it. And then you have the records once it's done. Where do we keep those? Yep. You know, do we keep the instruction by the mach- piece of machinery? You're looking at different different revisions, all of that kind of stuff. Maybe you found that you've had changes to how we're going to maintain it because it's getting older now instead of lubricating it every month. We need to do it every three weeks. Sure. Something like yeah. you're looking at your quality management systems requires that you have that stuff up to date and kept in a place where it's only accessible as needed to certain people. So Core is a great place to do that. And I think Scott actually talked in a recent episode, I think it was episode six, on how Core is actually designed specifically for all these compliance standards and all the needs that way. And that's one reason that captures things in a way that it's really great, not only when you need to do it, but when you need the objective evidence when it comes yeah, to well, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be able to open up the platform and just everything's right there. Yep. You're not scrambling to locate documentation. And I I lived in that world for a long time, you know, where, I where bet. <laughs> sometimes an organization outgrows that kind of manual system, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's if you're if you're a small organization, of course we work primarily with with smaller businesses, right? right? But uh, an organization sometimes gets too big for those manual systems, and then they become really cumbersome to manage yeah. because you've got multiple people that are involved in the process, and you've got many pieces of equipment maybe that need to be serviced, and so right. it just it just becomes overly burdensome to kind of track all of that, make exactly. sure that the forms are where they need to be yep. and that they're available come audit time or, or you know, just, just in general, just making sure that you're, you've got everything done that you need to get done. Yeah. The system provides all of that in a really controlled, concise way and provides notifications when things are due and all that, all mm-hmm. those kind of things that you would want, right, in a exactly. solution that's going to help you manage that process as opposed to you just managing it as best you can when time permits yep. and you're not focused on other obligations and things. And where's my clipboard that shows me what I'm yeah, supposed to do? Yeah, exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> Hanging on the side of the machine that got knocked off by a forklift, and we have no clue where it is. You bet. You bet. 100%. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, this has really been awesome. Really great points today, Matthew, uh, when it comes to preventive maintenance. Do you have anything else that you might want to share in regards to that? You don't have to, but if you have any summations or any other points you want to make? Nothing really. Um, just that, you know, preventive maintenance, when we when we introduce somebody to to ISO 9000, we we talk about a lot of things at the outset, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Setting up the primary foundational documentation is kind of where we begin. But, you know, PM, preventive maintenance is something that that we hit on, obviously, and and something that people, I think I kind of mentioned before, it it, it may not be the first thing that comes to mind, right? But it really is an important piece of the process based on all the things that we talked about in terms of, you know, making sure that you're able to continuously and consistently meet your customer requirements by making sure that, that your equipment is up and running as much as possible, right? So yep. it's just just something, it's, it really is an important piece of the, of the entire process. Well, it affects everything. 
when you're looking at a quality management system, you know, the tolerances might be wrong if it's not maintained. Yeah. Absolutely. If you're not getting it done, that's a quality issue. You're upsetting con- customers. That's a quality issue. You know, yeah. there's so many different aspects. Something you mentioned there that I'll just kind of kind of hit on real quick is tolerance. You know, when you said tolerances, right? Mm-hmm. So, so you might have, if, if you're not maintaining your equipment, you may have a case where a piece of equipment's up and running, mm-hmm. but maybe because of wear and tear on an equipment, it's not operating within its normal you know, window mm-hmm. uh, or it's not operating within its normal tolerances. And so that can affect a company's finished finish product, mm-hmm. right? Finished goods and maybe result in additional waste, you know, or even potentially make a product. And if you're not, depending upon how you're set up in terms of testing and verifying that your mm-hmm. product meets requirements, you know, you might miss you might miss par- the parts that are that are potentially out of specification, yeah. right? So it's not only about hey, I've got a critical failure and now mm-hmm. and now my equipment's not working. It's also about you know there's drifts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Equipment equipment can drift in terms of how it, it operates based on a lack of of proper maintenance. Yeah. So yeah, you got You have to be aware of that as well. So anyway, well that's great. Really great to have you here today and share with this. We had you here with Murphy before, but now you get your own one. So, oh, yes. a great job today. Really appreciate you being here. Yeah, absolutely. I'll look forward to talking with you again. Absolutely. And we want to thank everyone who's listened to our podcast today. We hope it's been informative for you. Now, if you're looking for more information about Core Business Solutions and how we can help you with ISO certification, cybersecurity, or even customized training, please email us at info at the core solution.com. Or you could visit our website at www.thecoresolution.com. And if you haven't already followed us on your favorite podcast platform or YouTube, be sure to do so. That way you won't miss the next Quality Hub podcast when it's released next week. Have a great day, everyone.